All aboard the Egypt Station Express, Paul McCartney wants to take fans on a return trip to his 2018 album. Is the new Explorers Edition worth the price of a ticket? On this journey, your mileage may vary. I'll tell you why, coming up next on Track by Track. Hey everybody, my name's Kyle, and this is Track by Track, music reviews, news, and commentary. Thanks for tuning in today, and if this is your first time here, please take a second to click subscribe so that you won't miss future reviews and more. It's been less than a year since Paul McCartney first took us to Egypt Station. That album was released in September 2018, and now, just eight months later, he's asking fans to take a second trip with the new Egypt Station 2-Disc Explorers Edition. Now, it's no surprise to see McCartney releasing a deluxe edition of his latest album not long after the original release. He did the same thing with the album New in 2013 and then 2014. But what's interesting in this case is that McCartney actually announced a super deluxe edition of Egypt Station first. Back in February, the Egypt Station Traveler's Edition was announced as an elaborate package featuring all kinds of swag materials plus a bunch of exclusive music only available in that deluxe box set. With a price tag of over $300, the Traveler's Edition was too expensive for most fans myself included. But I can't really complain about that because it's totally fair if McCartney wants to offer his biggest fans a premium package at a premium price that includes exclusive content to justify the cost. Then just two months later, McCartney ended up surprising fans with the announcement of the Egypt Station Explorers Edition. Now, it's not that a two-disc deluxe edition of his most recent album was really that much of a surprise. I think most of us expected it from the moment the original album came out last September. So when the Super Deluxe Traveler's Edition was announced in February, it seemed McCartney was going a very different and much more expensive route this time. So for fans like me who couldn't afford that big box, it's welcome news to hear that we can get all of the music from the premium set at less than 10% of the price. But I have to say, if I just spent over $300 on the Traveler's Edition based on the promise of getting a bunch of exclusive music not available anywhere else, I'd be pretty pissed off to see that same music get released just weeks later at a fraction of the cost. Sure, the Traveler's Edition has some fun packaging, but is the addition of a deck of cards, a jigsaw puzzle, and a handful of other exclusives really worth the price when the music itself loses its exclusivity? For the fans that bought it, I hope the answer is yes. For me, the most important thing is the music. When I buy any deluxe edition or super deluxe edition, that's what I'm paying for. I want more music and I want exclusive music. And when it comes to super deluxe editions, that's almost always what you get. Not so with Egypt Station. But as I said, I was happy to be able to get all the bonus tracks for less than 20 bucks. I mean, I'm not the one getting ripped off here, and chances are you're not either, since I'm betting almost no one watching this video actually invested in the Super Deluxe Edition of this album in the first place. Even still, you probably bought the regular edition of the album last year, and now you're wondering, is this new edition worth the upgrade? Before I dig into that exact question, let me say what I'm not going to do, and that's revisit my thoughts on the original album in any in-depth kind of way. I did a review of Egypt Station when it was first released, and I'll include a link to that in the description below. Spoiler alert on that review, I thought that the album was decent, but not great, and I gave it an X rating of 6 out of 10. Watch my review to hear all the reasons why I felt that way. In fact, the only thing that I'll add now is that in re-listening to the album for this review of the Explorers Edition, I didn't warm up to it any more than I did before. It hasn't grown on me, and I still stand behind my opinions from the original review. So, what about the Egypt Station Explorers Edition and the 10 additional tracks that make up the second disc, dubbed Egypt Station 2? Well, first of all, you know how I was talking about how fans that bought the expensive Traveler's Edition may be upset because this disc contains songs that they thought were exclusive to that set? Ironically, the first two tracks on Egypt Station 2 were originally promoted as exclusives on yet another version of Egypt Station. If you bought the album at Target stores, both Get Started and Nothing For Free were included as exclusive bonus tracks only available on that version. That Target exclusivity ended 
when the songs later appeared in the Traveler's Edition, and they're included once again here in the Explorer's Edition. So, if you're like me and you bought the Target version of Egypt Station last year, you've already got two of the ten quote-unquote new songs in your collection. Of those two songs, though, I do like Get Started quite a bit. I like how it starts out with an old-school McCartney vibe before the beat drops and the more modern production kicks in. One of the problems that I have with a lot of the new music across both Egypt Station discs is I don't tend to think McCartney sounds his best when these hotshot producers get their fingers all over the mix. Get Started is an example of where I think it works well. Nothing for free, on the other hand, at track two does not fare as well. It's overproduced and doesn't really leave any kind of lasting impression. Moving on to track three, we get the reggae-tinged vibe of Frank Sinatra's party, and it may be quite possible that the words reggae and Sinatra have never been used before in a sentence together. In any case, once again, I get a little bit of an old-school McCartney feeling on this track, but the truth of the matter is I think it would have been better off if they'd ditched the synths here and stuck with traditional instruments. For me, all of the electronics and effects here kind of spoil the party. On the other hand, I think there's a lot to like about 62nd Street. This song finds McCartney in the mode of his 70s contemporaries, Simon and Garfunkel, with a cool throwback vibe. I really do like the music and the vocals here, but don't listen too closely to the lyrics. This song features some of the most cliché and unimaginative lyrics and rhymes in McCartney's entire catalog. It's entirely predictable from the very first listen, like the song just writes itself. On track five, we get the full version of Who Cares, which means that although we didn't know it before, we were only getting half the song on the original album. So, to be honest, I never thought that Who Cares was a particularly remarkable track. In fact, it was the very definition of unremarkable, because I didn't even mention it in my original review. Here, though, I think the song fares much better. I really like the false ending, which is where it leaves off on the original album version. From there, the band segs into an extended instrumental jam. It's not especially showy at all, but I really do like the vibe. If you're a fan of the original Egypt Station album, I highly recommend swapping out the original version of this song on your playlist for the extended version. It's definitely an improvement. Then we have Get Enough, a track that was actually released as a non-album single recently. Maybe you've heard it, and maybe you had the same reaction that I did at all of the auto-tuned vocals, which was... No, no, no. I've read where McCartney was apprehensive about using that technique on this song, but decided to go ahead with it because the Beatles were always experimenting with new techniques. Okay, I get that, but autotune is far from new. I mean, Cher brought autotune to the masses with Believe 21 years ago, so let's not pretend like Paul McCartney is being an innovator here. And actually, if I'm being honest, the whole thing kind of sounds like a Bleachers song, to the point where it's surprising that Jack Antonoff didn't write and produce it. I mean, he's been all over everybody else's records in the past few years, so why not McCartney? But don't get me wrong, it's, it's not a bad song necessarily, I just don't think it works for McCartney. Even when the song shifts into Goodbye Yellow Brick Road territory at the end, Paul still sounds out of place. And ultimately, the song still feels like it's an incomplete idea, in spite of its overproduction. For the final four songs on Egypt Station 2, McCartney serves up live versions of several tracks from the album. Nothing gets reinvented or reimagined here, so there's no big surprises. If anything, what I found most satisfying about these performances is how strong McCartney sounds on his vocals. I hope they're legit. I hope they truly were recorded live and weren't overdubbed or excessively tweaked in post-production. Regardless, though, these are Egypt Station's songs, so how much you enjoy the live versions is probably going to be relative to how you feel about the studio versions. Come On To Me is a lightweight but fun pop rocker, and McCartney clearly sounds like he's having a good time singing it. But even a strong live vocal can't save the eye-rollingly obnoxious for you. Confidant is fine here, as it was on the original album, 
And then he closes with a live version of Who Cares, making that the third appearance of the song on this collection. It's ultimately a disappointing performance, though, because after hearing the full version several tracks earlier, I was really hoping to hear the live band on an extended jam. It doesn't happen, though, and I think that's a big missed opportunity. In the end, I think this new expanded edition offers enough additional value that it's easy to recommend as an upgrade to anyone who liked the original album. Which makes this release all the more insulting to the fans that paid hundreds of dollars for the music already. But if you, like me, thought Egypt Station was just okay, you may want to think twice about buying it again. That's especially true if you own the Target Edition. If anything, I think the added material modestly enhances the original album, but not enough to truly move the needle. If you don't own any version of this album yet, this new edition is hands down the one to buy. But just like I said last year, this album is for the McCartney frequent flyers more than for the tourists that probably only know the greatest hits. And again, as I said earlier in this review, the album really hasn't grown on me in the past eight months since the original release. So, all things considered, I'm giving Egypt Station, the Explorer's Edition, another X rating of 6 out of 10. And by the way, if packaging has any impact on your decision whether or not to buy this album again, be sure to watch my unboxing video where I'll show you exactly what a return trip to Egypt Station looks like. Once again, my name is Kyle, and this has been Track by Track. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, plus check out some of these other videos below that I think you might also enjoy. And of course, be sure to click subscribe, because true music fans always want new releases the day they come out. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.